All right. Hi, Denim. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Doc. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Vonvo.com. Uh, today's date is April 27th, 2013, and we're here to discuss the Boston bombings, which took place. Uh, just before we get our conversation started, I wanted to go over two things. Uh, the first is that right now this conversation is being recorded, and after the recording is completed, I'll be uploading this video to the internet to our YouTube channel. Is that okay with all three of you? Yes. Yes. All right, great. And then on top of that... Actually, four of us, my brother. All right, great, no problem. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, here at Vonvo, uh, we're all about our conversations, staying both civil and valuable. Um, we don't want there to be any personal attacks against one another uh, throughout the discussion. Um, are you guys fine with that ground rule as well? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so then let's get our conversation started. Um, Denim, would you mind just giving me a quick background of yourself uh, and why you're so passionate about this topic? And then Lynn, you can go next. And then uh, Doc, you could go afterwards. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, my name is Denim. I uh, live in Hollywood, California. I own a production company with myself, my business partner, Steve Flirt. Um, and so we make a lot of uh, films and shows and stuff like that about uh, the issues. And then I branched out from that as well. I started to um, focus on a lot of uh, world issues and global uh, circumstances and stuff like that. So then you have the, uh, the Boston Bombing, which I felt was a... Uh, really into the game to be happening, you know, right now. So uh, I came on last week and spoke a little bit about what I the outcome of the bombings was going to be. And so far, I've been proven correct on that theory. Um, so now we're just kind of here to, you know, obviously get other people's opinions and, you know, have the conversation and see what everybody else thinks. All right, great. And uh, Lynn, do you want to do the same? Sure, I, uh, you guys hear me okay? Yep, hear you great. All right, I became interested somewhere in the fall of last year of what was happening, and uh, I'm very concerned. I have four children, and these things keep happening, and it's not looking so much like it's incidental anymore, and so I just want to get the feel for what other, what other people are thinking and try to contribute and see if we can change things. Great. And Doc, how about yourself? Okay. I'm right outside Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, kind of northeast of it. Uh, I'm medically retired. I have with me my brother, John. That uh, He's a nine-year veteran of the Army. He did tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, We've been watching all this come down. We saw, uh, I'm trying to be good. <laughs> uh, we saw martial law it go into effect in Boston. Uh, the way these bombers have been handled, the only good one was the first one when they shot him. Um, the other, when they read the Miranda rights to the, to the younger brother, that was dead wrong. And I fully feel that Obama's protecting him. Everything he's doing is opening us up wide open for more attacks. And in my opinion, the man should be impeached. He has violated our constitution so many times it ain't funny. I'll turn it over to John. As he said, I'm a nine-year veteran of the Army. The Boston Marathon bombing is just a series of other bombings that I see that could be in totally prevented. They've had this guy, they've already interrogated him by the head, they've let him into the country knowing who he was kin to. This is something our government could have prevented long before it even happened. This is every bombing that comes across. They've already done the 
inspections. They've already done their conversations, everything with these people beforehand, knowing that what they could be capable of. Over. Just because of the other family members that has eyes of committal police, this gets to be more than coincidence. And I'm really starting to get concerned. Great. So, so what I was going to say, guys, is um, I think Wayne's got his uh, camera and stuff working and his internet. Um, I'm going to jump out of the conversation. I'm going to continue the recording. And, you know, if you guys want to hit on any of the subjects, Denim, you know, some of the items that you brought up last week, and, uh, you know, Lynn and Doc, you can respond to any of those. Um, you know, that would be awesome. And I will continue the recording, okay? All right. You got it. To get that out based upon the things that happened after it, you know, they shut down the whole city, shoved AR 15s and family faces, going not to come out of their houses, all this to catch one guy even though it's on record that they've been watching for over five years, you know, they, he does have ties to the Middle East, um, you know, in Chechnya, uh, and his family, uh, his dad is actually, um, there, there's a lot of alternative media sites that have looked into his dad being an operative, so there's a lot of different things that, um, you know, that have gone on, and one of the things that I said last week was uh, they tend to provocateur a lot of these events, and that doesn't always mean that the government necessarily is the one that staged it as much as they, they know it's going to happen and they let it go. One of the things that you said, Doc, about um, how they handled the, the brothers uh, last week is really interesting because I had said that we don't even know what really happened. Uh, we just know what they say the quote official story is. And, you know, there's other videos that surfaced with um, them actually having the brother and then shooting him to death. And then they came out with the other brother in a boat and said that he had a gun, so they were shooting up the boat because he had a gun, and they came out with no gun, and then he did. they did a tracheotomy on him, and then all of a sudden he can't talk, and but now they're taking him to prison. And so these are the things that they do. So it's something that to me is really interesting, and something that it, it needs to be, um, you know, and I said this last week, it's, that it's definitely a conversation that needs to have, it has to go past the forum because so many people can't seem to grasp the fact that these things actually happen and that there's been a lot of stage events that have happened here in the U.S. And you can look at a lot of the prototypes of things that are going on in Africa and in Europe, you know, with NATO and Africa and a lot of things that are going on in Syria. Uh, so this is just, we're just like another country that is starting to happen to. And we're starting to see next year they're saying, you know, we want more drones over all the events. We want GSA to go in all the um, all the different sporting events and stuff like that. So for me, this is just what the plan was. And like you said before, I agree that there's a lot of been, there's a lot of impeachable things that have gone on with the entire uh, with the entire house in itself, of violating the Constitution, violating the Bill of Rights, um, you know, violating the the posse common sense. So there's just a lot of things that I think um, are impeachable. But there's a lot of everybody in there should be uh, should be tried for war crimes. Um, you know, insider training, you name it. So uh, this is a conversation I think is going to be with. Well, I fully agree with you. I mean, he, even even John Boehner, who's supposed to be representing conservatives and Republicans, is doing deals under the table. The man's got to go. Uh, I don't want to see a civil war start here, but I'm locked and loaded. You know, I'm expecting it. Obama's trying to disarm us, make us more vulnerable. It ain't happening. Right. Well, the way that I look at it is there were some um, crazy things going on up there in Boston. And just like Denham said, um, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There were some crazy things going on. Um, a couple of days ago, I looked at a witness that was right outside, or was inside, and the shooting was right outside the window on the ground, and he was describing how it went down from what he could see, and he never said anything about a body being dragged, 
He never said anything about uh, the brother running over the other brother. And you would think if he was being a witness and see that, that's something that he would see or say to the CNN reporter. He didn't that's say a good those point. things. That's a good. He didn't say those things. And on top of that, if he was to drag that body for a while, I don't know if any of you have seen someone shot before. I um, I was in the Air Force for eight years. I've seen blood on the ground. If you look at the video that CNN did, you didn't see any drag. You didn't see no red uh, streak. You didn't see it. I mean, you didn't see anything. You, now, now, what you saw, you saw bomb residue from where it was thrown and it hit the ground. You saw a couple spots. But you did not see um, this, 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 this body drag. The witness didn't say anything about a body drag. And, and then the, uh, the, um, the press or the media came out <laughs> and boldly said that while the police were try trying to put handcuffs on the older brother, that the younger brother rolled over him. Now, if that was the case... Was there any other policeman that got ran over while they were putting the cuffs on? Was there any other police that uh, was, was, was hurt? Nobody says anything. So, yes, there are a whole lot of questionable things that happen up there. The door-to-door, -door, uh, going to your house with guns. Uh, I believe that it was a preempt uh, strategy because those police were heavily... Uh, yes. They were heavily uniformed. They looked like the military. They were. They had tanks. I mean, tanks on the streets. So I think it was something that they were looking to um, set up. I think it was something that a test run for something. Because why did I mean, Homeland Security has bought all these bullets? So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But like Doc said. Locked and loaded, baby. Locked and loaded. That's, That's right. right. Is Lynn Lin still here or did she get cut off? Lynn? Yeah, looks like Lynn got cut off. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I think I think that you guys are... Yeah. I think the one... Oh, okay. Okay. what do you think? Sorry. Sorry, no, I was blocking out my children. Uh, I said there's a tremendous amount of... In inconsistency in this whole thing. It makes no sense. And I think it's, you know, gradual reprogramming of our thinking in some way to bring in a, a military state and get us used to the idea that we have to have the government. I have an echo. Do you guys? Yeah. yeah it's How do I get rid of that? It just, it just, I think it sounds good. good. <laughs> you didn't hear me twice. Well, you gotta remember. You gotta remember. Yeah, I drove a tractor trailer for about 38 years, and I'm used to CB radios with that echo in them. <laughs> uh, uh, real quick, I want to say thank you to to any of you that served in the military. Um, appreciate what you've done. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then the whole having this guy in, in a hospital room. They knew who he was. And Michelle Obama went to visit him. Very cozy, cozy. He's been to the White House 14 times. And now he's gone. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, just, it makes no sense. Yeah. Well, You're right. I think one of, the biggest, one of the biggest... Oh, go ahead, Doc. Sorry. Uh, you're fine. Go ahead. I was just agreeing with her. No, I think that the, the most interesting thing uh, to to really look at is it, what's so frustrating is the vast majority of people, which I think we can all agree, that watches the government mouthpiece, you know, CNN, MSNBC, uh, even, you know, Fox News at a lot of times, they just, they will believe the official story. And uh -huh. it's like when you, when you question known liars, because they operate as if you don't even exist. You know, and you guys spoke a lot about Department of Homeland Security buying 2.2 billion rounds of ammunition 
and you had, you know, big sis Jenna Napolitano saying the bullets don't exist, that's a conspiracy theorist, don't believe black helicopter conspiracies. But then she comes out, oh yeah, well there are bullets, but they're not for you, but they can't be used anywhere else. Uh huh. And it's like, so, it's so bad um, that they, they really openly think that coming after, you know, trying to come after the guns and, and pushing through the legislation, and, you know, it, thank God that there's still some people that are in the Senate or in the Congress that still believe that the Second Amendment should have the friends. So, you know, it keeps fine, but you still have the people like, uh, you know, Pelosi and, you know, and all these other people that are like, no, we're going to get the guns no matter what. And see, what I believe with the DHS thing is they're just drying up all the ammunition. And, you uh -huh. know, I had gone with uh, some friends to Brass Pro Shop that we have out here, and there is no ammo. You know, you can't you can't get anything. It's just it's bone dry. And so I think that as we continue to move forward, I think that there are going to be more events. I think there's going to be more. I think there's going to. I think there's going to be another shoot. I think there's going to be another mass shooting somewhere because you you've seen how quickly the you know MSNBC and especially CNN says if you think you should have the right to bear arms, then you think that killing those children in Sandy Hook is okay. And I think that that is what a lot of people, especially in California, they are very, very much, you know, take away the, you know, take away the guns, only the people in uniform should have guns. And so I believe that these Boston bombings, like Lynn said, like you said, Doc, and like you said, Wayne, that it is great for a military state because you can see, and I spoke about it last week, that you can see the first thing that they said was we now need to have drones over these big events. We need to have PSA on the streets. We need to have it. Um, Obama time last year. He, he took away the um, uh, posse commentators and made that made it so it's irrelevant now. So I think as we continue to move forward, it's going to get really interesting because yeah, if they have a, if they try to go after the guns, there is going to be a civil war and they will lose. But yeah. it's the fact of the matter that we shouldn't have to get to that point. But until more people start to accept the fact that the government has people that. Are not you're not it's not even really our government anymore because our government was built up to build rights in the Constitution and when we have people in there saying that you are not we're not for that anymore those are impeachable things you know that's what our founding fathers fought for so that we could have those rights and now that things are saying that those are more of a privilege than a right that is when you begin to think that we need to start moving in a different direction. Well, it's what you him. just brought up is treason. Yes. Right. The big problem that I said with them trying to ban certain weapons over in Iraq and Afghanistan, Wayne, I believe you've been there, you can agree with this, the military and the governments over there extended the Second Amendment right to the individuals of that country, to their citizens, to maintain one AK-47 fully automatic assault rifle is protection for their home. However, our government is trying to say that the U.S. citizens themselves, the Second Amendment right doesn't apply to the individual as much as it does the military groups, the militants for that state. They're trying to deny that right for the individual. And then they're trying to deny us assault rifles. But it's okay for other people, citizens in their countries, to have assault rifles, just not us. We are the ones that have this Bill of Rights protecting us, right. but it's not okay for us. I don't understand their logic in this. Right. And I want to add something else in there. I just want to know if anybody, anybody, I challenge anybody to show me where in any of the amendments that it says that we have to pay our government, state or federal, any amount of money to exercise our Second Amendment rights. Why do we have to pay for a concealed carry? When I bought my 45, I went through a background check. I was approved to buy it. If I'm approved to buy it, I should also be approved to carry it in any damn time I would do. When I look at um, when I look at what they're trying to do, it's it controls them. It's, they are trying to control gun owners 
but they're not doing anything with the criminals. The criminals, I have yet seen them pass or even talk about any legislation to take care of the criminals that are getting these guns illegal. Not one piece of amendment, not one, not one iota is talking about um, the, the criminals, the gang bangers, the uh, juveniles that get these guns illegally. And, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing to it. But yet they want to take, they want to limit the magazine. And that's crazy. That, I mean, that, 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 I mean, <laughs> I can bet there are a lot of gun owners out there right now that are not limited in jack. They're not living in jet. I mean, I would like to see the government come into somebody's house to check to see if a, a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, I gotta say something. Um, this ain't the, the 45 ain't the only thing that I've got. And I promise you, we'd start a small scale war with all the neighbors around here. And the friends that all I got to do is pick up the phone, uh, <laughs> they better come heavily armed. They better not bring some with them. They can't afford to lose. <laughs> That's right, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I think I think too also is that you have to also think that there's not, there doesn't, I mean, I think in the certain places are, but it's very rare to find, you know, three people, four people that are all able to come together from a different place in the country and all have the same kind of awareness for things that are going on. And so for the vast majority of the people, they they buy into the media, they buy into the, the, the expensive suits, they buy into the grandstanding, they buy into the mouthpiece because they've, they've just been indoctrinated into it. And, you know, I, I, uh, I know it was Hitler that was talking about, even back during his regime, that he said, like, I don't care of what the fathers think about me. I have your kids. And see, all of the TV shows that are on talk about how gun owners are bad and returning veterans are bad, and those are the ones that always lose their minds. And, and you just you can just see it. It's the program and conflict. So then when you get that up-and-coming generation that'll say, you know what, I think that we should take away people's guns because they look scary. A lot of people, especially out here in California, they literally sit there and you go, oh my God, you have a gun, and they kind of just shrivel up. They don't know what to do with themselves. Because they've never been in a fight. They never, they've never seen any of that. They're just playing these video games that allow you to think that you're simulating something, but then they're willing to take they're willing to take your guns away. And I know in California, they're trying to pass a, legend, a bill right now that will let illegals vote on uh, juries now. So you have, it's just, it's just open borders for everyone. It's you know, gun owners are bad, returning veterans are all crazy, and it's just, it's this complete upside down of the way that America is supposed to be, and I think that's where the biggest issue is actually going to come into play. You know, yeah, Dennis, you know, let me interrupt you for just a second, if you don't mind. Somebody in text right now, uh, Justin P. out of Dayton, Ohio. I want to address him for a second, what he's talking about there in Dayton. My wife is originally from Dayton, and I lived there for about 13 years, right there in Northridge, and I'm going to tell you right now, I went back here not too long ago, and it's gotten unreal, and it's the same here around us, uh, from what Wayne was saying about the gangbangers, they have gotten so bad that every morning when we get up and turn on the news, and Dennis, I mean, no disrespect to you, or I'm sorry, I get down. I, re, I uh, mean, no disrespect to you or Wayne, and I mean, nothing racist, but it's all blacks, it's all gangbangers, and there, I mean, there's killings every single day. There'll be four or five black men arrested, and it's not black on white or white on black, it's black on black. And I don't understand it, they're killing their own people. This is getting old. And too many young black children are being slaughtered by these gangbangers just wantonly shooting up neighborhood. And if he takes our weapons, they're the only ones that are going to have guns. Hell, they're going to start coming right into the house. They're already doing it. 
Well, yeah, I, 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 I definitely agree, and I think that's oh. the thing that's most frustrating. As uh, you know, that concerns me. It, well, I think the the most important, the one of the things is that everything that's gone on, if you know, everyone's probably studied history at some point, and you know, a lot of it's mainline history, but really getting into the writings of history, the way, the best way that you tear people apart is you tribalize them and make them feel part of something, and then say that's, I mean, that's what football, right? You have your team and every other team stuff that they're not on your team. And with the African-American community, which is in the writings of, of the global elite and stuff like that, where it's you have to you have to separate the fucker. And so that's why you have Bloods and Crips and this is my turf and my turf. But so when you take away money, you take away food and housing and all that, you only have your the testosterone of your tribalism. And so anybody that crosses that, anybody that's not you, you feel like you need to take out. And they brainwash it in such a way that they don't see color. They don't see, they just see, this is my turf. This is my, this is mine. And, and it had the great effect on the African-American community. I think of, they have allowed for every community to kind of have their thing. African-Americans are the ones that normally rob and steal. Or the white people are the ones that are normally like the ones that are doing the mass shootings or the bombings, you know, because they're the ones that are on the SSRIs, you know, and then you have the Hispanic people that are, you know, are, are doing the drugs and stuff like that. So everything, every system is built for that group. And that's what the hardest thing is, is because if, you, if somebody got, if, if a mainline person heard you, Doc, say, black to black people, and they're going to come into my house if they take away my guns, they will sit there and go, oh, well, you're just racist. Where I sit there and I go, no, I'm understand that and that's what's so frustrating because a lot of people can't see past the that has to do with color it has to death is death you know and when they it's systematically been put into place this is the thing that when people like Wayne of which I saw your Twitter I know that you you openly talk about it a lot and stuff like that you're very you know you're on the front lines and stuff like that as well and I think that it's really difficult to really break through the, the psyche of people to get past this mainstream media BS to get past this regular talk show nonsense, to really get people to understand that it's a system that has been put in place for a reason, the Helgarian principle. It's divide and conquer. And I think that is what the most difficult thing is for, to get people to understand what it really is. I agree yeah. with you completely on that, Denim. One of the things I'd like to bring up is, let's take the country of Afghanistan as an example. Afghanistan has been in a state of constant war for the past 50 years, ever yeah, since the Soviets were invaded. Yep. Yep. You look at Afghanistan, the only thing that really holds that country together is the entire country is divided into tribes. Each family protects its own. <coughs> Until that country actually stands united, they're not going to be able to protect themselves against any foreign invaders. Even the internal invaders, such as Al-Qaeda, they will not be able to protect themselves against um, a united force like that. And one of the things that this country has done to divide itself is years ago, they took the Pledge of Allegiance out of school. Their goal, main point for patriotism to our, our children. Right. They are no longer being raised to be a patriot of the United States, to believe in the great power. When you no longer teach the children, they get taught by outside forces, whether it be the gangbanger down the street, the drug dealer on the corner, yep. you name it. Unless you teach this kid to belong to something, they will go to the nearest influence. And that's all races. Mm -hmm. And you know, someone someone told me a long time ago, uh, when they took prayer and prayer and, uh, prayer and uh, the Pledge of Allegiance out of the school, a whole lot of guns went in. A whole lot of knives went in. And when I look at today's children, just what Doc's brother said just a while ago. What's your name again? John. John. Just what just what John said before. I know when I grew up, uh, we were taught uh, we were taught patriotism. We did a pledge of allegiance. We did prayer at the beginning of school and there was nobody sitting down there was nobody saying well i don't want to do it there was nobody saying well i didn't want to do it in the first place it was just something that we did uh -huh. and there were um, 
a whole lot of there were a whole lot more. Uh, we were happy. Out we we were happy to put our hands over our chest. You know, and yeah, and now we did today, that whether we were the president or a citizen. That's right. That's right. And kids were taught this. Kids were taught this, and that's what we grew up with. But somewhere around the 80s and 90s, things just start being torn out. It's almost like the parents wanted to be the children's friend instead of the people's parents. And uh, the breakdown of religion, religion has been, there's been a war on religion for the last few years where uh, churches are being attacked and threatened. Now, think about this. The churches are being threatened with, you have to do this or you are going to lose this. You have you have to um, give out uh, birth control or are you going to lose it? Um, it, it, it the, way, the way that the government has reached into your house, that is the problem. And there aren't a whole lot, I mean, there are a lot of people not happy with it, but they aren't saying it because I think they're scared. And, uh, Doc, let me say this to you real quick. It's not racist to speak like that. Okay? Right, of course. I mean, I, no, I, and I, I, I talk to, I talk to a lot of people. Uh, I'm, I consider myself part of, of the Tea Party myself. And I have to tell them time and time again, you speak your mind. You, I mean, the, this country was built on that. You can speak your mind and say, look, I don't like the way that the policies are going. I don't like the way that my neighborhood is going. There are a whole lot of black kids out that are shooting up each other. It's the truth. In every neighborhood, that. In every neighborhood, you have black on black crime. You have white on white crime. You have Latino on. I mean, just, it's it's the truth. But this political correctness, the political correctness has shut down a whole lot of conversation. It's easy to say you're racist, and then to like take you off of your message. So now what you're doing, you're saying, "Well, look, I got this. I'm not that. I'm not this. I have these amount of friends." It takes you off your message. And they are experts. Mm-hmm. The Democrat, the Democrat, watch yourself, experts Wayne. at them. Watch yourself, because we keep talking like this. It won't be long before we have to go get a background check and a license to exercise free speech. Oh, hey, I talked to one of our Twitter people. I fought, fought with them. Oh, and, go ahead, go ahead, Red. I was I just going to say, the, man, the, I just wanted to make sure that this country is safe. And I will do anything to protect her. You know, she has she has afforded me a, a opportunity, so it's worth me to go ahead and try and, and do everything in my power to protect this country any way I can. I'm 100% behind Doc, and I mean, <laughs> you want my stuff? Come and get it. Let's talk. Right. Then what did you have to say? I was just going to say that I talked to um, one of the Facebook folks the other day. Oh. Here, there you go. Sorry, I turned it down because the kids are in here. Um, I talked to somebody on Twitter the other day who, once he hit 10,000 followers, the, social, the, the FBI came out to investigate him. They searched his house. They grilled him. They grilled his family. Because even though he had never threatened Obama, they said, well, you have followers now. We have to make sure you are not inciting, um, uh, you know, an uprising. I mean, if that doesn't scare you, I don't know what does. But all of these things are unbelievably intertwined. Um, The gun thing, the education thing, the, you know, uh, destabilization of our economy, they're all set up, and, and, and this is the Alinsky and Clower and Provins type of thing. Can, can you guys not hear me? No, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. And can you hear me, Wayne? I just lost him. Can, oh, no can you hear me, Wayne? Oh, stop. 
Well, okay. Max Max says that he can hear his augury. So going not, going not back. To, okay, going back going back to the Boston thing though. Um, this this uh, this administration doesn't want to say anything about this. Well, they had to be dra- their feet had to be dragged. They had to be taken out and with handcuffs just to say that this was a terrorist act. Yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to uh, associate terrorism with the bombing. Period. They're trying to say that their kids are acting alone. They're trying to say that um, this kid right now can't talk. Say that he was shot in the throat, shot in the lung. Come on. Yeah. I mean, the guy, the kid climbed out of the boat after they shot him up. Right. And, <laughs> I mean, they shot that boat up. I don't even know how they killed survived. Yeah, but there's. But yeah, they'll tell you they'll tell you that they shot it with rubber bullets, and then you see you know holes all over, and then he, they said that he had a gun. They said he had a gun, and then he comes out, and then he doesn't have a gun, and they say, "Oh, come here, lay right here. You're injured," and then give you a tracheotomy, and then oh, actually, he admitted to actually you know doing it. So, but see, that's what I'm saying. It's they, it's so disrespectful how they speak to you because when you are informed and you do know what's going on, you can't yell loud enough to people because it's, how do you not get that? It's like, and, and then when the FBI comes out and says, because uh, uh, originally, which I agree with, I believe that they were trying to blame a patriot in the beginning because they said, only look at these pictures. Every other picture is not relevant. Just don't look at anything else. Then that didn't work. So then they roll out these two kids, which the FBI has been watching for it's between two to five years, depending on the numbers that you look at. And and then they have, you know, they have connections in Chechnya. Their their dad is, you know, their dad is associated in a lot of different organizations as well. So when you look at the rabbit hole gets deeper and deeper, and it's something to where now once you kind of know the playbook, you know, when you and then you have the uh, the the you know the quote unquote and fake anthrax BS that is, you know, sent to all these different people. It's the same play over and over again. So he's like you don't even have to you don't even have to do that much research because they use the same thing because they're not creative. But because they keep the way that they keep people together as far as compartmentalizing, oh, they were Muslims. So then they go, Well of course Muslims did it because they're radical and they just want to kill everyone. But that's not really what they're about. But see the people that don't know about them and you believe what mainstream media says, you could think that all Muslims are bad. You know, back in the right. day, before I was awake and understood, I thought the same thing. If I saw a Muslim, I was like, oh, you're a terrorist. You know? And so, I definitely agree with you, Wayne. That's why I said that I don't think that they really wanted to blame, uh, you know, people that were from Chechnya. I think that they really wanted to blame somebody domestically because they oh, want yeah. to be able to roll in these, yeah. you know, all of these different things and say that, you know, because in Department of Homeland Security, it says that Al Qaeda is no longer the number one threat. They're saying that the number one threat to gun hunters, libertarians, all supporters, constitutionalists. That's what they're saying. So when you have to go terrorism, people are just like, well. So I think it's just going to be really interesting because they're doing the same thing with Benghazi. They're hoping to drag it on long enough to where they don't have to actually say anything. But there are still certain people, albeit only a handful, that are still in there saying no. You're going to give us answers on Benghazi. We know it was a stand down. You, we know that you gave, you know, we know that you gave, quote unquote, Al Qaeda 10,000, uh, you know, service to air missiles. We know that there's going to be chemical uh, warfare in Syria that you guys set up. And now that's going to be the reason why you're going to invade Syria. So I think that that's why I always said in the beginning that you want to know what's going to happen in the United States or in the United States. Look at what they're doing in other countries. They provocateur everything. They run, they run Al Qaeda in. And what they're doing in different countries in Africa with Africa and NATO, where they're just they're just going, they're just running over people. And I think the one thing that's still stopping them here is the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. The moment that they can completely say, you know what, Second Amendment's dead. Take down Pakistan, which they've already done. The Tenth Amendment's dead. First Amendment. Well, that's what they're trying to pass this by, and it just failed. Even though they're already doing it, it just it gives them the right to say that they're doing it. The moment that they can take away the Constitution is the moment they can do what they're doing in Africa and in the Middle East. You know, and it, 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 it on every level they're doing this. Children in television shows with this genetically modified food. You know, with all of these different things, they're just they're trying to defeat you and break the will of the American people 
And until they realize that they can be something more, it's just going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. Are you guys but aware also, that... Also go back to the mother of these two bombers right now. The mother, the mother of these two bombers is crying and she's yelling. And, you know, if you really take a look at what she's doing, she's not doing it for the Americans. You know, she, she, she's talking a good game, but she's not doing it for the Americans. If you, if that video is going across the world, and it's speaking to a certain fringe that is watching a mother who killed her son in the United States. Uh, and what she say, Allah Akbar, whatnot. Oh, she's not talking to the United States. She's talking to those people across across the water that really want to do damage. But, but you know, with us, you see, they call her crazy. <laughs> they call her, oh, she's really mixed up. I can't wait till she get over here so we can um, arrest her and stuff. She's not coming over here. That woman is not coming over here. And, and, and um, but believe me, some of the stuff she's talking about, my, uh, the FBI was watching my son for the last five years. The FBI has been tagging my son. The FBI uh, uh, was watching him on Skype. The FBI talked to my son. I believe that. I believe that. Because just a couple of days later, after she said that, then the report came out where the FBI did ask him questions. But they, did, they didn't see that he was, uh, uh, what, uh, an important issue, so they let them go. Okay, crime. You know, right. they, they, they hold so much stuff, man. This, this administration is supposed to be so transparent, and they hold so much stuff. And and the liberal media is holding it with them. Well, when know. you get Banker Bell up, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Cor corporate, and, 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 you know, they all want to be in the White House. They want to do the interviews. They, I mean, this president, this administration, this Congress has done so many wrong things in the last five years, and the people know it. Well, one side, one side of the people, know it, and then the other side is like, we don't care. You know, you talk, you talk to the uh, individuals that voted for President Obama, and you ask for. You know, you ask for some uh, uh, victories that he's gotten, and the first thing they'll say is Obamacare. That's the first thing they'll say. Oh, well, what does Obamacare do? I don't know, but he's got it passed. They don't know anything about it. So when I look at where this country is going, it hurts. But to know that we have people like you and Doc and a whole lot of people that I talk to on Twitter, Facebook, we still have a large contingent to still do something. We just have to come together and do it. Because, yeah, and I think, yeah, I, I think too, that it has to be, you have to get past the fear of being labeled a quote-unquote conspiracy theorist or, you know, right. being, right. feeling like you're just being discredited. Because right. one thing that you touched on with Doc, like you said, is that people will say you're racist to just discredit what you have to say. Yep. You know, if yep. you say that I want immigration control, well, you're racist. Well, I don't want Obamacare. You're racist. And so you don't really ever have the argument because you don't really nope. know. People don't know what Obamacare is. They just think they're getting free health care. But it, if you look at what Obamacare is, anything but that. It's going to cost the average family $20,000 more um, a year. And that's supposed to be a good thing. And then I'm racist because I don't like that. And I think, Wayne, you'll probably know um, probably a little bit better than Leonard Doc was. But I know for me, especially speaking to my friends, if you speak out against this organization or, you know, Obama, then they're like, they look at you like, don't you realize that you're black? You're like, you want, like, just sit down and shut up. And it has, like, it has nothing to do with that. But see, they just expect you to think, well, you have a black president and you're black, so therefore you should be happy like you finally got something, like you finally won. And that's what my biggest argument has always been. It's this constant political football is constant tribalism to where you can never really 
get to have an argument because they can't get you past seeing black or seeing white, get Democrat or Republican, because they don't want to actually talk about the real issues. When they talk about the real issues, then they're going to realize, wow, we actually have more things in common. Like you said before, if the people in Afghanistan came together, they'd be realized, well, wait, we all want liberty, we all want freedom, we all want to, you know, we all want the same thing. So wait, what's really keeping us divided? Oh, it's these people that are we're supposed to be quote unquote listening to these people that are supposed to be in power, the ones that are sitting on the hill. So I think the moment that people can really get past the fact of, as African Americans, we didn't win because we have Obama. White people, you're not losing because Obama's in. You didn't win when Bush was in. You didn't win when Bush was in. It's that's not. There's certain things that we have to come together now, more than ever as a country, to realize that we have liberty together. You know, that's where we have liberty. Where we can all stand united under the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. That's what we win. And then I think one the big issue with Obamacare is you can ask any of the other countries in the world. Ask Canada, Germany, some Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry about that. It cut out on us. I thought you was done talking. No, no, go ahead. Uh, I'm saying you can ask any of the citizens. You can ask any of the citizens from Canada, Germany, UK, any of them that have the socialized, like Obamacare is trying to do for us, which would they prefer? Would they prefer to go to a doctor in their country or one in ours? And they will choose ours every time. One of the things they don't like about it is because there's no incentive for the doctor to improve himself, to get better at his field of practice. Because it's all socialized medicine. They have nothing more to gain from it because they're only allowed to do so much. Granted, the government pays for their medical care, but what they don't tell you is that that citizen pays what the government does in a form of taxes. You can take the average individual that makes, say, $3,000 a month. Uh, that may be a high end in our economy now days, but what they don't understand is that with the implementation of Obamacare, surgical costs and everything like that, 60% of your board, your medical care, whether you receive it or not. I'll call control. Denim, you asked That's something right. earlier, and I'd like to answer your question. Um, you asked, how do you educate people, or how do you talk to people in your area? best way as I have ever found is to be truly educated myself about what's going on and about our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and then ask a lot of questions because most people haven't thought through the process. They just haven't thought long term. They see bits and pieces. I did it for a long time. Start putting the whole picture together by asking them to logically think through it themselves. They start having that light bulb moment where they go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not where I want to go. Right. And it's really, no, really think, okay. It's thinking like the Socrates approach to everything. Yeah. Um, and you have to, you have to be, you know, really educated. I think this, the the thing is, is that in this day and age, with the compartmentalization, critical thinking is completely gone. You know, I remember in school they used to teach critical thinking all the time. But now they just tell you what to think and then write whatever you think on the thing that we're already telling you to think. Uh -huh. that's, that's the way of, you know, it's like they teach social studies now. So, but before it was just history, now it's social. And, you know, so the way that everything has been set up is I can see long term and I know what all of these different trickle down things are. You just, it keeps doing everything in increments. And uh -huh. the more that you do that, the less people will resist because it's like, oh, well, it's not that big of a deal. You know, don't uh -huh. be conspiracy theory theory things. Just want to take your gun. That's what they said three years ago. Well, now slowly but surely, what are they going to do? Well, they probably know because the way that they work is they shoot over the top. And then when people resist, they go, okay, just to find the medium. So they'll say, we want to ban all guns. And then they know that that's not going to work. So what do they do? They just dry up all the ammo so no one can get it. Well, what good's your gun if you don't have anything to put in it? So there's so many different ways that they're going about it. So that's why I think it's going to take so many people like what I got from Q-Lin, 
of continuously going out there because it is almost like a full time job, you know. Because for me, at some point, I want to have kids, but I couldn't raise them in this kind of. It's just, it just, there's no way. Because for me, it's like to think about what they're doing and all these different ways of, you know, everything has to be politically correct, and you can't say anything about Obama because you're racist, and you know, you, you can't say that reform because you think that I should have to pay for this. And one of the things that you said, Wayne, about churches now is that they've been, they're so desperate for money that they'll sign, they forget about the, the First Amendment where it's a separation for church and state, but the government will come in and say, sign up for a 501 3 and we'll give you government funding. But then, yeah, we need you to teach this doctrine if you want this money. Because they're so desperate for money, they go, okay, well, I guess everyone turn your yep. guns in, you know, be, love your government and turn your guns in. And, okay, well, you know, make sure you don't do this. Oh, tell us, tell us, kids, if your parents discipline you at home so that we can go tell the government officials so you can take your guns away. So, or, you know, so take your kids away. And this is what they do. So a lot of the basic people don't know what the First Amendment is, don't know what the Second Amendment is. So if you said, oh, the Tenth Amendment's dead, they'd be like, what's that? You know, so I think that it is trying to re-educate the, the, the world uh, as far as the United States to try to get them to understand that we have basic rights for a reason. We left Europe for a reason under dictatorship. We didn't want to be told what to do. You know, we wanted to have these freedoms. And people now are starting to think that these freedoms are, are a privilege and not a right. You know, right. and I think that's where it's really becoming difficult to really break through to people because they have been so indoctrinated by all these different media sources and by the president and by his cabinet. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see what's going to be happening in the next couple of months. Um, you know, and by the time, you know, Obama gets out, uh, it's going to be bad. <laughs> that, you know, unless people start to really wake up, it's going to be real bad. And he doesn't have to, anything to worry about. I mean, just as soon as he no. gets out, he's going to... He's going to retire to Hawaii, and the country is going to be in so what uh, at least eighteen, nineteen trillion dollars in debt. I mean, come on now. I mean, I don't be, think he be so right, though, that. because and he got into all. He didn't have to. He had to put no stimulus. All he had to do was stop spending. All he had to do was do executive orders. We're not going to spend this. We're not going to spend that. We got to get this economy back on the road. Though that's a responsible thing. But no, they did. They, I, they I don't think he plans to leave, Wayne. In trying to pass not only a bar, but they did the stimulus. They bailed out the banks. They did. They did all. They did all the all the little pet projects that they could do. And now, look where we are. They don't want to fix the economy. In the first couple of years, it was Obamacare. They didn't worry about jobs. Now, going into the fifth year, now they want to do guns and um, gay marriage. Nothing about the job. Nothing about jobs. They want to separate the company, I mean, the country, with guns and gay marriage, but they don't want to talk about jobs. So well, I think uh, I think that they don't. That's the biggest thing is when you talk to. Uh, African Americans, I find, are the hardest to talk to about Obama right now, just for the for the obvious right. reasons I mentioned before. And it's like, but you don't have you you're living off of the government, you know. Right. So as soon as the government decides to take something away, from you, and I had made the point because I was in Washington D.C. the week after they did um, the sequestration came in, and I said, if anything, this should be the reason why people shouldn't shouldn't want to live off the government because you're talking about people in government that are now going to say, you know what five days of the week you may not work or 20 days out of the year you're not going to work and you're going to have to take so many days off in the middle of the month and you're not going to get paid for it. And so all these other people that feel like they're winning because they're president in, their job is your, your the, the whole indoctrination is learn how to do more with less. You know, anybody that makes a little bit more than you, they don't want to see you succeed. And this is the indoctrination of, of what's been going on and it's really difficult to break through to a lot of them because it's like, your job, you're not making any more money. You know, uh, inflation's going, you know, inflation's going up, constantly it's going up. And you're still, in more and more, it's going to be more expensive to even buy a bottle of water. And until people realize, wait, I'm not making any more, I'm actually, uh, I was told that taxes weren't going to go up, but then people, income tax went up on, they're making $20,000 or less, or less. 
But see, that that in and of itself is is something that it's like, but wait, Obama, you said you weren't going to raise uh, income taxes. You said you weren't doing that. But then he does that, and then it's like, oh, well, it's okay because the quote-unquote Republicans wanted, you know, won't give him anything. Because that's really the common the common argument is when you have this argument, it's always well, the Republicans don't want him to do anything, and then the Tea Party just, you know, the Tea Party doesn't care about anyone. And they, because they can't get past that. And I think that, like you said, Wayne, they're, they're not interested in, in stimulating the economy. They don't want to see people like, like my production company, like that to see. That's not, that's not what's about. They're about big, they're about big corporations. They're big, too big to fail. They all get Goldman Sachs money. They all get Rockefeller money. They all get Bill Gates money. This is what they, this is what they have. You know, they take all their money and put it offshore. And you can look at what's going on in, in Greece. You can look at what's going on in Italy and Spain where their unemployment rate is around 22%, 23%. You saw what happened in Greece. They shut the banks down. No one's getting no one's getting money, and we're going to take an average of $40,000 out of people's bank accounts. That bankrupted most families. You see, so this is something that, this is this is a diagram for what's to come. You know, but America thinks that, I think what well, we've had it good for so long that we almost feel as though it can't happen to us. You know, because they're still on this American dream thing. You can't get, until you get past the fact of our government's not our government anymore. We're run, we're run by globalist agendas. We're not, we're not for the people, by the people. So you have to get past that. And until you get past that, we're never going to get anywhere. We're going to be dragging our feet. Because we can talk to as many people as we want to, but until they really feel like they want to change, it's not going to do anything. Right. Now, I mean, I'm not, I'm not one to uh, separate uh, companies that hire people away from the people that work. Uh, Obama is an expert at class workers. I mean, and I, he gets that from his so-called community organizer days when he was uh, for the people and not for the, not for the top of the companies. And that's basically how he's trying to run his presidency. When I look at, um, when I look at how he has separated the classes uh, from the employers, he, he wants people to be mad at the corporations. He wants people to be mad at the big companies. If you have somebody out on the street, what do you think happens with the money that the companies make? First thing they'll say is they think that the company's pocket money. They will say that they really think that the um, companies pocket the money. They they don't think about uh, overhead. They don't think about employees. They don't think about the health care. They don't think about um, other offices. They don't think about utilities. They don't think about anything else that has to be paid for by the people on top. So, when I, I mean, but then again, if you look at the people in Congress, now remember now, remember this, the people in Congress, they don't create jobs. They don't create jobs. And the money that they get, they get it from us. Their paychecks come from us. So, when I look at them trying to tell us what to do and how to do it, it's almost, now remember, they are our representatives. But then they turn around and they tell us what to, who to like, what corporation not to like, what what business owner not to like. I mean, Occupy Wall Street was basically trying to separate the employer from the employee. That's why, that's why so many of um, the Occupy Wall Street people didn't want to go to work. They don't like percent Well, who who creates jobs? I I have yet seen a poor person hire fifty people. I have yet seen a poor I, I have yet seen a poor person hire and and maintain books. You know, it just doesn't happen. If they're going to be jobs, then somebody has to run the business. I'm not, look, I'm not mad at anybody that gets out there, spends all night, all day, year after year, trying to get their business going to hire people and then, and, 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 and make money. I'm not mad with that. 
I just don't want the government to come in and take what I'm trying to make for my family. This is my money. You know, I, I mean, it's just, but don't, I, but don't come to me through these television commercials and stuff and say, uh, you should be mad at the corporations. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I'm going to be mad at the individuals that are trying to take money out of my pocket. If, if I don't mad at the corporation, then why work? Why work? Why even work for the companies if you're supposed to be mad at them? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's just such a... I mean, I, th- I mean, I think really at the end of the day what needs to happen is I'm hoping that the good people that are in you know, I think we do have so many people like Rand Paul. I think is you know somebody that is a is a good representation. Um, you know, and I think he's one of the you know one of the good ones. Obviously, he's not as you know he's not he's not Ron Paul. He never no one will really will be a Ron Paul. But I think he's one of the best that you know that we can get in there. Um, but I think what's really important is trying to figure out ways to get people to be able to look past you know, it's the Congress or the Senate, because at the end of the day, you're not on that team. You know, you don't win. You know, and when you see your guy up there talking and putting down on Congress and putting down the Senate, you yourself are not winning. You're paying for all the things like you said. And when my paycheck gets like less and less because of political infighting, that, that in of itself tells you that you're not able to tell me how I should be able to raise my own funds. You know, and oh, no, I have a small second. business going out and working. Oh, go ahead. Um, Hold on for a second. I was looking in the chat room. Sonny O um, was talking about the stimulus uh, for the economy. Uh, Three shows that if you only hold money back and don't spend it, that doesn't help the economy. Um, First of all, the stimulus, actually this country is in bad, bad situation. Uh, The country doesn't have the money to be putting out stimulus. Uh, I heard an expert describe it like this. You're at a pond. You have a bucket. You dip the bucket into the water and scoop out some water. Okay? Then you go to the other side of the pond and dump the water back into the pond. And Basically, what you're saying is, I just stimulated the water. I just put money, into, I mean, I just put water into the pond, and I so that it would be some more water. That's basically what our government is doing. The money that they're borrowing, they don't have the money to pay it back. And the money that, and, and I mean, it, to me, to me, honestly, the only way to 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 save to save any money. Is just like you do in your household. You don't spend. You don't spend to to to. Um, you don't spend to make money unless you're spending unless you're on these um, make <laughs> get rich type of stuff. But uh, uh, most most households, if you are over uh, budget, if you don't have uh, if you don't have money for this. You don't spend. Don't spend so if you don't have. If you don't have. So if you don't have. If country, you see that every country is in debt. Okay, and in order to like stimulate the country, make it go work, you know, get the system working, get the machine rolling, you need to invest money, and that's what the government does. So it's not. Where do you get the money? Where do you get the money? Well, by money? by loaning, investing. You know, that's the same with the investment. I mean, you don't have the money initially. You don't have the money. I, there is a lot of echo. Where? Yeah, I hear. Where? Where do you get the money? Hold on. Uh, one where second. do you get the money? I hear. I hear myself constantly. It's really annoying. Anyway, what I want to say is, when you're investing in a company, or to say you want to start a company, you don't have money initially either, right? You need to invest, and with that investment, you make money. And that's exactly how a country works with stimulus as well. You cannot say, you know what? Are, we are really in debt, and we're not going to spend money because all of that does is create more debt. Because that's sure. I mean, if you think simply, that's true. However, you need to start making, uh, you know, create jobs. And when you create jobs, people are going to pay tax, and and all of that 
gets set in motion. You cannot just say, hey, you know what? We're not going to spend any money. That's just, that just doesn't work like that. Any, every country in this planet, almost every country is in debt. So you cannot say, you know what? We're in a really bad situation. We're not going to spend any money. What you have to do, though, is look at the policies of a country. For example, the United States right now spends more on, milita on, the, on, on military than all countries combined. I mean, how ridiculous is that, really? I mean, how ridiculous is that? You need to cut on, off on that. The United States have numerous times said, we're going to close Guantanamo Bay, we're going to um, draw out of Afghanistan, stuff like that. You know, you need, you need to break that off. And that's how you create money. You need to see, like, which areas you're going to like, like uh, start cutting off money and which areas you're going to invest in. Not just say, you know what, we're not going to invest, we're not going to spend money because we're in debt and that, that's it. Simple as that. Because that's okay. not how it okay. works. Listen, nobody is, nobody is saying, is it too loud? Nobody is saying that you can't spend money. Okay? Can you hear me? When I was, when I first okay. came into... No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'm not saying that we have to stop, I mean, I'm saying we have to stop creating more things that we are spending money on because we don't have the money we don't have the money to pay for it okay now if there was a across the board cut on every then I would champion that if there was a cross the, I mean, on everything I'm talking about entitlements I'm talking about welfare I'm talking about uh, the military I'm talking about everything if there's a cross the board on everything if if we stop spending more than what we're earning, then that works. But yes, uh, Social Security, uh, uh, the government workers, yes, all, all that stuff needs to be paid. But we're spending money on stuff we don't even have, and it's not even our money. They have, they have to like borrow have money. Borrow money. Like what, for example? Okay, here's, this is what I had. Uh, this is what I would. This say is what I would say on that on that topic. That's the I. It, um. I think that, like, for me, the economy is built through the middle class, and that's what the you know obviously when people when consumers spend, companies make more. But I think what's happened is that. If you look at General Motors and you look at a whole bunch of these different big time uh, companies that are being shipped to China, and they're now, so, and then they're paying their.